Hey everybody, it's Jeannie at Richland Sewing Center, and today is Wednesday, which is traditionally hump day. Um, I am back here working on so many different projects all at the same time. I'm trying to keep them straight, but I am going to tell you all about what we're going to do. We're going to do a little tour today, and I'm going to show you a couple projects today, so bear with me. Remember, tomorrow we will spin if... We get enough shares today and enough comments today. So make sure you pay attention. Uh, do a comment and not just hello. You have to say something about what we've been doing or what you would like us to do if you possibly can. So first of all, I'm going to read you some more of those little things I was talking about yesterday. Uh, I read six of them yesterday, so I have six more to read today. They're just kind of silly. Uh, it says, does anyone know if we can take showers yet or should we just keep washing our hands? Number eight, this virus has done what no woman has been able to do. Cancel sports, shut down the bars, and keep the men at home. Number nine, I never thought the comment, I wouldn't touch him or her with a six-foot pole, would become a national policy, but here we are. <laughs> Number ten, I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. <laughs> Number eleven, I hope the weather is good tomorrow for my trip to the backyard. I'm getting tired of the living room. <laughs> and number 12, never in a million years could I have imagined I would go up to a bank teller wearing a mask and ask for money. <laughs> I, th I know those are kind of silly and some of them it, it hits a little bit close to home, particularly the one I mentioned yesterday about your jeans. But I wanted to share them because I thought they were just kind of fun. It was something that was on Facebook. And you know, sometimes there's some really cute things on Facebook. And sometimes there's some not so cute things on Facebook. Uh, I'm going to turn this around and show you a couple things over here and then show you how I did them. And then we're going to do a tour. So I'm going to turn this around. These are the prizes for tomorrow's spin if we get enough people to participate. So we have a Patrick Lowe's layer cake. I really don't want to let this go because I love it. But I'm being a nice person. I'm going to share it. We have a Moda Jelly Roll. A bottle of Best Press, complete with the sprayer. And this is the one that is scent-free. No, I take that back. It's Caribbean Beach, so it smells really good. Uh, another Jelly Roll. This is from the Blank Company. Blank is actually a fabric company. So those are all kinds of bright colors. Here's another Jelly Roll there. This is a half Jelly Roll of Batiks. And it's kind of got all kinds of colors down through here. It's called Set in Stone. We have an Aurifil thread and some cotton bobbins. And then I've decided to give away one more of these design packs called Holly Jolly, which has a lot of neat things. And those are the ones I used on those towels that I did. So these will all be on the spin tomorrow if we get enough likes and shares and comments. Okay? Now I'm going to scoot over here and tell you why I'm going to tell you these. This is a one of the hot pads from the Better Not Pout book. Um, I'm just going crazy with that Better Not Pout book. This is the snowman, and inside here is a layer of batting and also a layer of Inselbright. So we do have two types of Inselbright here by the yard. One is the regular Inselbright, which is kind of just a silver with a thin backing to it. And then we also have some Inselbright fleece, which is like having a piece of fleece or batting attached to the Inselbright so you wouldn't have to use another layer. I used the Inselbright and the batting. And Jane and I were talking yesterday about which side do we want to put it on? Well, I said for a pot holder, you would normally put this side against the hot pad or hot dish or whatever you were picking up. So we put the insel bright with the silver side facing on this side. Because if I give this to you as a present, I hope you don't pick up a pan of lasagna with this side of it. But that's totally up to you. You can kind of decide which would be better. If you're using it like a trivet, then you'd want to put the insel bright right under the top layer of fabric to do that with. Now, I wanted to show you too, because I have a white snowman, and this is um, glitter grunge that I use for that. This is the actually the piece of fabric that I used. I backed the fabric first with Shape Flex SF101 because I didn't want it to show through. And then I also like to put Heat and Bond on the back so that when I'm doing this, I can iron this down to the background so that it stays. Because you'll notice there's no quilting through him. There are some cheek stitches and eyeballs and noses and stuff. One nose. But um, I like to be able to fuse it down. I think it looks a little bit nicer and does a little bit better when you get ready to do your applique. So that is one of the projects I was working on this morning. 
And then um, I have a very dear person in my family. It's my mother-in-law. And she has been sick lately. Some of you have known uh, Miss Helen, and she's doing much better, I'm happy to report. But she did say that they didn't have any Christmas decorations. So I thought, well, I can't let that go. Now, sometimes she watches my live. So, Helen, if you're watching, you're getting a preview of your Christmas present. So I decided to make her a pillow because I thought that would at least add a little bit of a bright spot. So I love this fabric. Every time I walk by this bolt of fabric, I just think it's the prettiest fabric. It's just happy. So what I did was I cut a square. I have an 18 inch pillow form. So I cut a square of fabric 19 and a half inches and I'll tell you why. And the first thing I did was back the fabric with SF 101. So the fabric that I put on the front has a layer of interfacing fused to the back of this front piece because it gives it a nice smooth body. And I really, really like that. And then I made cording, and I'm going to talk to you about that in just a minute, uh, by cutting that on the bias. And in the back, I have an envelope style back, which is when I have two double folded pieces that overlap back here, because that makes it really nice. So what I did after I cut my 19 and a half inch square the first thing I do is taper off the corners because I don't want what we call dog ears here. So I'm going to come over here and I'm trying not to make you dizzy. I'm going to kind of move around today and I'm here by myself. So, um, bear with me. So if this were one of the pieces of fabric, I take my rotary cutter and ruler and I come down a half inch from the corner and up here about three inches and I slice that off and then I do the same thing here. And I know you would think it would make the pillow look funny, but it doesn't. It keeps this from being that pokey dog ear looking corner. So I do that to all four corners of the pillow front. When I do the pillow back, I had two pieces of fabric similar to this, and I folded them in half, wrong sides together, and made sure that each of those was beyond the halfway point of the pillow. And I had them nicely pressed. And then I also did that same corner on those because that back was going to have to match what I had on the front of the pillow. With me so far? <laughs> okay, and then I made some cording. So I took my red and white stripe fabric, and this strap, this stripe is actually on the straight grain. So I cut this on the bias because I love to work with bias, and I used my zipper foot right here to stitch. I had a piece that was two inches wide. So this is the piece of fabric that I had, and the cording. This is not that clothesline that we've been making coasters out of. This is regular cording that's used on pillows and seat covers and things like that. So there are three steps to doing this cording, and I wanted to just tell you real quick. The first is to actually make the cording. So the first thing I did was I sewed the two raw ends of the cording together, and when you cut things on the bias, your ends look like this. So when you sew them together, it's a little bit different. You put them together, right sides together, and sew a diagonal seam, and then it comes out real nice and flat. Actually, I think there's one. No, it's in the seam. You can't really see it. But so once I had it long enough, I folded it wrong sides together over the cord. See, the cording is inside here. And I did my first stitch. Now, I didn't try and stitch real, real close to the cording. I didn't go as close as I could. But I kept the two raw edges even, and I sewed it to make the cording. Then the second step is I'm going to sew the cording to the front of the pillow. So I laid the raw edges. And notice I have a pretty good size seam because you're gonna, remember I said I cut it 19 and a half and the pillow form is 18. So this was gonna work out just fine. So I put this on here on the right side of the pillow and I did my next seam just a little bit closer to the cording than what I did when I created the cording. So that's my second stitch on the cording, and now it's fastened to the pillow front. Now when I come to a corner, I took my scissors and cut little slits here and squished it around the corner. Can't do it with one hand very well, but um, and there's nobody here to hold the phone right now. But you kind of squish it when you go around the corner, because if you don't squish it a little bit, when you turn it right side out, it'll have a tendency to want to make your corner kind of curl. And I want to make sure it lays nice and flat. So I get that all the way around the pillow. And when you end something like this, like this might be the spot where I started. So when I come back around the other direction, 
I undo some of these stitches, or I could undo the stitches on the other piece that's coming around. I cut it off and I stick the end inside the other piece. So what I've done basically, let me see if I can kind of explain that. Pretend there's cording in here. I would fold this back and fold it over like this. And the cording, the end of the cording is actually inside that fold. So it might come up here about an inch. And then when you sew over it, it's a real nice ending. You can't really see a lot where the ending is. It's a very smooth ending. It's very easy to do. And I apologize because I don't have anybody to hold this to really do a good job of showing you. So that would be what I would do to apply it to the front of my pillow. Then I'm going to put the back of the pillow on, and when I, I pin it, usually, I pin at least one pin on all four sides um, of the pillow. I overlap those two back pieces, and I'll show you again. And then I sew it from the back side of the front of the pillow. And the reason for that is I have a row of stitches here that I can see, and it's not on this one. But remember, I've sewn the cording to the front of the pillow so I can see the seam. So now when I sew the front and the back of the pillow pieces together, I snug my presser foot over a little closer and I get real close to the actual cording. I'm, not, I'm still about a half inch seam, but I'm being tight. This is my zipper foot and all the zipper feet are a little bit different, but you can move your needle all the way over to the left side so that when you're up against that cording, you would be actually pushing. So see if I position it like that. You can see where my original stitch is, and now my stitch would be closer to the cording. Because when I turn my pillow right side out, I don't want to see any of those stitches, and this takes care of it. So I'm going to go back to my pillow over here. So see, here's my cording, and you can see that there's no stitches visible where I sewed that on, and it's nice and smooth. The corners are nice and smooth. They're not curled. In the back, I have the two pieces that overlap. These are fully folded in half pieces so that there's no big lump there, and it's not going to what I call burp open, <laughs> but it was easy to put the pillow in. I did leave some of the seams. I didn't really trim the corners because I wanted them to stay full. If you want to make the corners a little bit more full, you can actually stick some polyfill in the corners and kind of fluff those out. But didn't that turn out cute? I'm just kind of proud of that. So um, if you're making pillows, it's real quick. I did this this morning because I got that feeling this morning that, you know, I think I need to make her a pillow um, to kind of brighten up the apartment a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to walk out through the store because we are still going to be open tomorrow. And then, of course, over the weekend on Saturday, we will be closed on Friday for Christmas. So I'm going to walk out through here. We have some new fabrics. We got that Be Grateful fabric in and we got more of it this time. This is what has the bees and all the colors and the flowers and the sunflowers and everything that go with it and we also have bolts of that fabric right down here so Barbara Eason if you're watching you need to come get some of this these are these are just gorgeous so the bee fabrics are extremely popular right now and then of course we still have our Christmas fabrics on sale I'm going to walk on out through here I'm going to try really hard not to make you too dizzy this is our regular pattern rack and then over here, these are the 50% off books. I moved that rack over here. It was over in the classroom, but since we're not having any classes right now, I brought this out here. There's some great books on this rack, so come take a look at that. And then over there, those are also regular pattern, our garment fabric pattern, excuse me, um, our seasonal patterns, our collage patterns, some of the shabby fabric patterns, some of the Kimberbell things are all over there. It's a great pattern selection. This is the regular book rack. Um, this is where that Better Not Pout book, that's what that is. Um, so these are regular price books on this rack, and we also have a rack up by the register for that. So I'm going to come on over this way. I want to remind you about the Quilter Select Rack. The Quilter Select Rack are those awesome, awesome rulers that just don't slip. We have the rulers and the mats. 
we have the the rotary blades here, and it's a real good buy. The, the price on the rotary blades for Quilter Select is really good. These are the applique scissors. They are super, super sharp. And then on the back of the rack, which everybody forgets, is where we have the rotary cutters. And it looks like we only have one here right now. And these are the glue stick refills, but that rotary cutter is amazing. So if you haven't ever tried the Quilter Select rotary cutter, it is awesome. It's heavy and really, really nice. This is our Hoop Sister shirt. I never get to wear this. It's always here at the store. <laughs> I need to take it home and wear it sometime. This is where I put a lot of crystals and it was really fun to do. We do have that design in stock. I'm gonna scoot on over here. This is our Notion wall over here. These are some parts, some feet and things, and there's all kind of notions on this wall, as well as the wall up by the register. So I'm just kind of panning over this real quickly. And then the table underneath this, these are our pre-owned machines. And we really have a great selection of pre-owned machines. We have several models of the embroidery machines. These have totally been serviced and cleaned and taken care of, and we don't put them out here until they are in really good shape. And then there are some basic sewing machines down toward this end. So if you need something in the way of a pre-owned, we've got one serger here right now. Um, but just ask and we can see if we have something that you might like. And then over here, this is the other notion wall, the rotary cutters, the little accessories, the pens, the fray check, all the markers, all the needles, all the scissors. I'm just kind of going quickly through here. The specialty bobbins and things. All of these things are over in this area. So I think you can kind of see that. This is another area of the book rack. It's right here by the register. Cindy, say hi. There's Cindy, she's waiting to take your money. So there's the other book rack. This of course is the Kimberbell rack. There's my Kimberbell sign. So all the Kimberbell things, and there's that new Kimberbell mug rug. Uh, these are all the Kimberbell things, our brother accessories. I'm coming to the other side of the Kimberbell rack. We have all kinds of Kimberbell accessories, patterns, notions, batting, felt, vinyl, just all kinds of stuff on the Kimberbell rack. Over here, we start in with the stabilizers. Up there are the Inspira stabilizers. Down here, we have a lot of the, um, in our form, the things to do, the Jelly Roll rugs, the lightweight tearaway. This is the Floriani stabilizer rack. We've got two racks here for that. These are our Anita Good designs, and we move on down to the OESD designs, the Purely Gates designs, the Hoop Sisters designs, a lot of things down here. We have two big thread racks here. One is the Exquisite Thread is right here. The Floriani thread is over here, and both of those rotate. And then over here we have Keith working. Say hi, Keith. Hi, Keith. <laughs> <laughs> this is our Quilter Select thread, which we love. This is the lighter weight thread. It's great for piecing. It's great for doing lettering, all of those things. And, of course, I'm in the middle of a machine area here. I'm going to scoot back over here just for a minute. This is the Scan and Cut accessories here. I have Scan and Cut stuff here and here. And here, all those things. There's the Kimberbell glitter. I move over here. These are embroidery designs here. Those are those stockings I showed you last week. And then over here, the Janine Babbage designs. And so, see, there's my little dog pillow. Home is where the dog is. Um, a lot of these designs here. Down on the end is the Amy Lee Scott. This is the edge-to-edge -edge designs. And then all of those designs for her runners and placemats and things like that. That's pretty much all her things. More scan and cut. Over here are the creative grid rulers. Those are the rulers that have the little bumpies on the back. So we have a great selection of those. There's that wonderful rotating cutting mat. That'd be a great gift hint. <laughs> uh, a lot of creative grid rulers. The Eleanor Burns rulers and some of the others are down here on the end. And then over on the other side are and more selections of rulers. It's amazing how many rulers you need when you're a quilter, <laughs> especially. Lots of rulers. There's our soft and stable and our bow saw in our form and all those things. So great selection of rulers over there. We've got our dime category of designs right here. And then this is our sale area. Everything with a yellow dot on it is a great price. So if you need to take a look at that, there's my featherweight that I never get to use because it's out here. <laughs> there's another one of Janine Babbage's um, designs made into a pillow. I'm gonna come over here. We're getting over, this is more into the machine area. I'm gonna peek up here at BJ and see what he's doing. I think he's probably getting ready to eat lunch. Say hi, BJ. 
<laughs> Would you look at me? It's terrible when your son's here. There, he's smiling. This is the Viking and Fof area up here. The other Fofs are over on the other side. There's the, the Viking feet are on the wall. The Janome foot rack is right here. So I've covered everything extremely fast. Here's our handy quilter which this is the Amara, which is absolutely wonderful. So if any of you are looking for, this is a 20 inch quilter on a frame. We have it set up in, on a fairly short frame because we just don't have room for anything any larger. And then of course we have our seal fat quarters down there and there's Jane's books. Um, we have samples of the books that are made. These are the fabric books. And then they're all in packages there. And then back in the rest of the fabric department. So I've made a full circle I've probably made you very, very dizzy, but I wanted you to be able to see everything. So come see us. We are here and ready. I am trying to get a lot of things done here at the last minute and hopefully be ready for Christmas, although we're not really going to do anything special. Um, so it's going to be mostly Doug and I and just say, saying a peek at the kids in there sometime soon. So try and come see us if you can. We want to see you. Make a comment share. If I get enough of those, I'm going to spin that wheel tomorrow. So I will try and be real short tomorrow because I know Christmas Eve is a busy day for some of you. Um, our church service isn't until seven, so I've got plenty of time, but I want to spin that wheel. And I think I have seven or eight presents, so get your name on that wheel, okay? Thanks for watching day, y'all. Have a blessed day. Bye.